It's the big day after the big game, but in a recent Nielsen poll, 51% of viewers said they prefer the commercials to the Super Bowl itself. So who were the winners and losers of this year's Super Bowl advertising? Since 1989, USA Today's Super Bowl ad meter has been the must-read for advertising's Monday morning quarterbacks. Laura Petreca was co-author of today's article, and she joins us now. Great to see you, Laura. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on. No, you probably didn't get a lot of sleep last night. So the number one commercial, the Snickers ad, yep. which involved the actress, the veteran actress, Betty White. This is the first time number one for Snickers. It got an 8.68 rating out of 10. Really a turnaround because Snickers, right, got criticized by people who thought it had an anti-gay message three years ago. So why did Snickers resonate so well this year? This year they did some classic Super Bowl advertising moves. They used well-known personalities. People all know the stars of the ad. They used humor and they had a surprise ending, which was great. All three things, very funny, over the top, makes you laugh out loud. And you remember the game after, you remember the ad after the game. Your report suggests it could have been called the Old Fogey Bowl. Oh, definitely. Because of so much flashback in addition to this spot. We also had the Bears doing the Super Bowl shuffle from 1985. Yep. Brett Favre looking even older than than he usually does. The Who performed, of course, at halftime. What was up with that theme? I know. I don't know. I just feel like what happens each year is marketers glom onto some sort of theme. It tends to penetrate throughout the ads. Old fogies and guys in their underwear was the other theme. Do you, if you remember the Coke ad, Dockers ad, Career Builder, all had guys in their underwear. So I mean, we're ladies. Did it lure, was it to lure the ladies in? I don't know. Are we an important like, demographic? I'm going to tell you, Super these Bowl? guys were not about to lure in any ladies okay. by looking at them in their skivvies. <laughs> Clearly, I missed the uh, yeah. ads. Yeah. Okay, Doritos, number two with the dog collar. Now, yep. Doritos has been a perennial favorite. In fact, I think it was number one last year, but Doritos fell to number yep. two this year. So was it just about Snickers being so funny and so great and resonating so well? And Doritos taking a step back, or, or was it still, you know, really I clever? I feel like it was a close game between those two ads, but Snickers' ad really stood out among all the others. The Doritos ad was really cute in terms of the fact that it had an animal come out on top over a human being. And people who watch Super Bowl ads love animal tricks, love animals doing tricky, fun things, so that really resonates with the audience. Let's jump to the losers. Uh, Go Daddy, two of the four lowest-ranked ads. I still don't know what GoDaddy is. Perhaps a lot of people are yeah. in that boat. It's just such a hard um, concept, no? It's crazy. It's a, it's a service that lets you register a domain name. They've been doing the same thing year after year after year, and I think their ads are getting a little bit tired, a little bit old. They're too expected. If you want to stand out on Super Bowl Sunday, you need some pizzazz. You need some surprise. You need something different, and they just didn't deliver. Maybe they'll get the message this year. The wild card was this Letterman, Leno, Oprah Winfrey oh, yeah. promo. Caught so many people off guard. I mean, how did they get Leno in there? Because Letterman has been so critical of Leno with this whole debacle yep. on NBC. Yep. What a great surprise, and it shows what a good sport Leno was, what a great sport Oprah was. David Letterman thought of the idea. He got going on it, kept it top secret. They snuck Leno into Letterman's studio, having him wear a disguise, a hood over his head and dark sunglasses, and they kept it top secret, which made it have such a great buzz worthy promo for CBS. I think it's got to be good PR for all three talk show hosts. Oh, definitely, definitely. We do have a little extra time, Laura, so let's go back to some of the winners. And number three was Budweiser, yeah. another perennial favorite, Bud Light, The House, The Bud Clydesdales. Yeah. You can't have a Super Bowl without the Clydesdales. Oh, Budweiser knows what it's doing year after year, and they have a diversity of ads. They've got everything from very quirky, offbeat ads, such as a guy that built a house out of beer cans, and they've got heartwarming ads with the Clydesdales. So they've got the formula down, and they usually come in the top ten year after year. So. Overall, did the ads this year bring the bar up? for Super Bowl ads for next year, or did it stay about the same compared with recent years past? I feel like it stayed about the same. The big thing this year versus years past is in this economy, marketers want to get more bang for their buck than ever before. So you're going to see these ads on Facebook pages. You're going to see marketers tweeting about their ads. They're going to be promoting email this out. They're going to be doing contests. They want to get as much of a powerful response as they possibly can for the money they spent on their Super Bowl ads.